Now, a 12 News I team special report, abuse of force. I literally thought that I was going to die. After a female police officer reported allegations of abuse, the I-Team exposes a pattern of hazing in One Valley Police Department. How it lasted so long, I have no clue. Bringing the SWAT team to a standstill. You probably shouldn't have a SWAT team. A lieutenant fired, a SWAT unit revamped and reimagined, and one former officer finding justice. Hello and thanks so much for joining us for this special I-Team report, Abuse of Force. I'm Kariba Devine. I'm Mark Curtis. This story started almost nine months ago when the I-Team first learned that the Goodyear police lieutenant who ran internal affairs was under investigation himself and the department planned to fire him. The I-Team's Bianca Bono has the story and a warning this investigation includes allegations of sexual abuse that may be difficult to hear little by little starting to set himself up to control my career and my personal life. In 2015, Jamie Cole met Goodyear Police Lieutenant Joe Pacello at a gym. I initiated the conversation. Um, you know, we were talking about my background, his background. Hey, yeah, I used to be a police officer and he jokingly said, well, do you want to be a cop again? I'm like, actually, yeah, I do. She says the two began a romantic relationship and soon after, Jamie got the job as a patrol officer. And whenever I made him mad, he would always remind me, I brought you into my world and it was, it was his world. I brought you into my world and I could take you out of my world. In that world, Pacello was a highly decorated officer, 10 years at Goodyear PD, head of professional standards in charge of hiring, training, and disciplining officers. He was SWAT team commander, but Joe Pacello had a disciplinary history. Did you at any time threaten to break his neck? You know, LT, I, I probably said it. I, I don't remember as he at the moment. Um, I was upset. In 2008, he was under internal investigation accused of assaulting a Maricopa County Sheriff's deputy at a training in Florida. How tight was he squeezing? It was pretty tight enough to kind of get my hair out a little bit. 12 News previously obtained the audio from that investigation and records show Pacello grabbed the deputy by the neck with both hands and shoved him into a urinal, causing the deputy to hit his head and chip his tooth. He told Internal Affairs he'd been drinking. I had a good buzz though, I would say, because I was drinking hard liquor and uh, the bartender was like double pouring the vodka. Pacello was suspended for two days after that and then continued climbing through the ranks in the department. He met Jamie just before he was promoted to lieutenant. And Pacello was married, so Jamie said their relationship was a secret. About a year after she started at Goodyear PD, she wanted that relationship to end. It was impossible. It was impossible. In early 2017, she got a call from Pacello. He wanted her to come to his house to talk. And I walked into the house thinking we were going to have a conversation, but it turned into like this whole, you know, handcuff, use of force, handcuff, uh, putting a hood over my head, uh, putting my hands over the back of a chair. Um, you know, I asked, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Then she said he sexually assaulted her. When he finally let me go, when I earned the right to leave, and he gave me my warning that if I told anyone about what happened, that he would just say that it was swap trading. Jamie didn't know it then, but she would later learn that blindfolding, handcuffing, and ice water were familiar to other Goodyear officers too. An outside investigation conducted by Chandler Police later calls it Goodyear's SWAT selection process. Current and former Goodyear officers say SWAT recruits went through a mock kidnapping where they were handcuffed, hooded, and transported in a vehicle blaring loud music, given tests while being sprayed with water or exposed to freezing water. It's known within the department as Hell Day. We don't have anything here that is hell day now. It might be a term that's coined by some of the people that have attended the SWAT training day. After weeks of declining requests for an interview, Goodyear's police chief Santiago Rodriguez told the I-team that recently they've made some changes. I have removed it from the testing process is the handcuffing, the, the uh, uh, hooding or blindfolds as you were saying and so forth. Though the testing still includes ice water. We use water, 
ice water in a shallow pool to test for dexterity. Obviously, they're putting Legos together there. Multiple former Goodyear police officers confirming to the 12 News I team they went through this process, a process SWAT experts describe as unheard of. They're so out of whack. They're so out of off, off kilter. They're out of bounds. They, they, they just don't get it. And that's not something that you want your law enforcement agency to be known for. That's pretty extreme. Uh, that's more of a control punity type thing to me than anything else. And I, I quite frankly, I don't heard anybody doing that for SWAT. For years, Jamie was silent about what she said happened to her. Do you call 911 and say, hey, LT just assaulted me and sexually assaulted me. I didn't know what to do. Jamie said Pacello continued to call and harass her for more than two years. In 2020, she reported the assault to her police chief. That is all I ever wanted, was to continue to work my job and not be harassed. That's all I wanted. That's when Chandler detectives launched their criminal investigation, finding evidence of a romantic relationship and Goodyear's SWAT initiation process, concluding the existence of such a process served to complicate the investigation as detectives could not determine which acts constituted an assault versus test preparation. No charges have been filed. I wasn't there for a SWAT test. That just infuriated me. Joe Pacella was fired months later in March of this year for, quote, violating departmental policies. 12 News has repeatedly called and emailed Pacello and his union representatives at the Police Officers Association in an effort to talk to him. We've also gone to his home twice. He hasn't responded to any attempt to contact him. Jamie left the Goodyear Police Department but says she's still fearful of retaliation. She only agreed to meet us at an undisclosed location. My first reaction was fear. Fighting through that fear, hoping her voice leads to change. It wasn't for any purpose ever, except I needed somebody to know what was happening so it would stop. Again, Pacello faced no charges following the criminal investigation, but we obtained audio interviews and talked to current and former Goodyear officers about what the SWAT team testing was really like, exposing tactics that had been kept secret for years. You don't talk about Hell Day. But former and current Goodyear police officers did talk about Hell Day in interviews with a Chandler police detective. The so-called Hell Day is a controversial initiation day for Goodyear's part-time SWAT team that was kept secret for years. I'll probably get a lot of or more people hate me because I'm banned, but whatever. You get handcuffed, you get a black bag thrown over your head, you get your gun taken from you. It is one of the most rigorous testing that you'll probably find in any police department across the nation. Goodyear Police Chief is, Santiago is Rodriguez sat down with the I-Team to talk about his department's so SWAT team into, initiation. We're using scenario-based assessing training tools to assess the best and most professional people to be on our SWAT team, which deal with the worst of the worst in the community. The former officer said after going through days of physical and firearms testing, he was told to show up to the Goodyear Police Department before sunrise. He was given a medical evaluation. Then come the handcuffs and hoods. Then they put you in a van. The van sometimes up rock music. It'll have this, that, blaring, whatever. Then there's pop quizzes throughout. He said recruits are driven to a training facility and the itinerary changed each year. Including one year, he described recruits were handcuffed in a room with gas and no gas masks. How does anybody make it out of there alive? <laughs> Holy cow. Most people don't. The attrition rate is extremely high. Chandler police also interviewed the current deputy chief. Where did the idea um, about like kind of doing the blindfold and the handcuffs, like where did that kind of originate from or who I should say? Where Probably and who? From me. For one year, we had him put on a gas mask and put um, a balaclava inside the the lens of the gas mask. Okay. So it covered up their eyes. The deputy chief was asked if anyone on the part-time SWAT team ever suggested an idea that was too extreme. But I had to tone down the whole team a couple of years ago. Okay. And I told them it seems like every year 
the desire from the team is to make this harder and harder and harder. 12 News asking law enforcement experts to weigh in. To me, it smacks of a lack of a lack of leadership, including Kevin Robinson, a former assistant chief with Phoenix PD and current criminology professor at ASU. You know, universities don't allow hazing and those types of behaviors into their into the fraternities on their campuses. So why would we think it's okay to do something like that within a law enforcement agency? Chandler police didn't recommend criminal charges against Pacello in connection with the allegations made by Colt. But the former SWAT commander was fired in March of this year. He's appealing his termination. The chief of police said these tactics have been a part of the SWAT team for years. But he recently decided to stop the use of hoods and handcuffs on SWAT recruits. A point the former officer interviewed by Chandler police also questioned. Probably if HR saw this, they'd put a kibosh on that. How it lasted so long, I have no clue. Still to come on 12 News, how local leaders react. I trust our police department. And a former lieutenant defends his actions. There's no way I got due process here. In the I-Team special report, abuse of force. Welcome back as our I-Team special report, Abuse of Force, continues. Handcuffing, blindfolding, and hazing. When the I-Team uncovered Goodyear PD's secret SWAT test known as Hell Days, reaction from local leaders was mixed. The late mayor of Goodyear, Georgia Lord, told the I-Team's Bianca Bono she maintained full faith in the department. But quickly, this reporting would lead to change. I trust our police department. Goodyear's Mayor Georgia Lord responding to allegations of hazing within her city's police department. I believe in them. I have been a witness to how they do perform. And so uh, my comment is, Thank God we have such a great police department in the city of Goodyear. State Senator Lisa Otondo is concerned. In a statement saying in part, the events described in this reporting are truly disturbing, adding, it is beyond me why these abusive practices could be going on for this long with the tacit endorsement from the Goodyear Chief of Police. Within two weeks after these reports first aired, the I-Team would learn that Goodyear Police was taking more drastic steps towards reform. Bianca. And we learn from records requests from another Valley Police Department, the Goodyear SWAT team temporarily shut down. In an email to the Buckeye Police Department's assistant chief, Goodyear Lieutenant James Hernandez says, quote, Effective May 1st, we are temporarily standing down our SWAT team while we review selection, retention, policy, SOP, training, etc. Essentially, it is a complete review of how we operate. A spokesperson telling us in an email that police leadership is conducting a comprehensive review of the program to make sure that it's in line with National Tactical Officers Association standards. But NTOA's Director of Training and Education said Goodyear had not made arrangements for training for weeks after the shutdown. We have not heard from, from Goodyear, I can tell you that. Don Kester, a former SWAT commander himself, says that Goodyear's practice of secret hell days, not documented in written policy, is indefensible. If that's the crux of our process and we have to rely on secrets, we probably shouldn't have a SWAT team. We should stand down and we should come into the, the 21st century. Former officers described Hell Day, practices that varied year to year, including one bizarre Easter egg hunt. And there's a bunch of Easter eggs and there's one of those little mini handcuff keys thrown in the Easter egg. Saying one year, handcuffed recruits given no mask were told to search for the key inside plastic Easter eggs in a room filled with gas. There would be no reason to have anybody handcuffed during uh, chemical agent exposure. Despite all of that, Goodyear City Manager Julie Karen says she has confidence in Chief Santiago Rodriguez to conduct this review of the SWAT team. Oh, I have absolutely full faith that uh, Chief Rodriguez and his team um, have all of the resources necessary to, to make and keep this. It already is a top-notch department. By May 28th, records show the police department did make arrangements to do a five-day workshop with Kester's organization. And while the police department worked to revamp its SWAT team, the former SWAT commander made an emotional appeal to get his job back. In May, he took the stand. I was a SWAT operator on the, on the SWAT team. 
For the first time, 12 News hearing directly from Pacello as he fights for his job back. Pacello responding to Cole's allegations, saying it was all part of training her for the SWAT team. Yes, I'm training this person for SWAT, and but this is not what we do in SWAT. He said he developed a unique exercise for Cole at his house in 2017. This is what Joe Pacello, not Lieutenant Pacello, but Joe Pacello, came up with in his mind to create a training scenario to work on somebody's stress and anxiety. What Joe Pacello said he came up with involved handcuffing Jamie, blindfolding her and escorting her to his bathtub, which he had filled with ice water. He then said he told her to submerge her face in the water for 10 seconds. And because she had um, the handcuffs on, yeah. I was there to kind of help guide her just to make sure she didn't lose her balance as a safety precaution. After the training was over, Pacello said Jamie consented to sexual acts. For the department, Pacello's version alone was enough to terminate. Consented or not consented, there's still an issue with it. City attorneys say that incident isn't the only reason he was fired. She told me she was scared of him. This is one of former Goodyear police officer Jamie Cole's neighbors talking to an investigator about an incident this neighbor witnessed in 2019 when Jamie and Joe were breaking up actually yelling and screaming at her and trying to push the door open and he would constantly come around and, and harass her. I didn't call the police because she is the police and I didn't want to cause her any issues. But during an appeal hearing, Pacello said the neighbor misunderstood. Were you screaming and yelling outside of her residence at that time? No. He said he then went through her garage and walked inside through an unlocked door, something he said he did frequently. And that's when I raised my voice and said, hey, um, what the I'm standing outside, you know, you knew I was coming, I'm looking like an idiot out there. But Goodyear's police chief and deputy chief said it was problematic. Pacello and his attorney believe termination is too harsh for the 16-year police veteran, arguing he deserves to get his job back. I have sacrificed my personal life to be the best officer and leader in this agency. Up next, what happened to the former lieutenant? All I want is to continue working in this profession. Plus, how good your police overhauled the SWAT team. Will there be any handcuffs or hooding? No. Stay with us. Since we first reported allegations of hazing in the Goodyear SWAT team, the police department has gone through dramatic changes. First, Joe Pacello, the former lieutenant, lost his appeal to get his job back. His name was also added to the Brady List, a list of law enforcement officers with possible credibility issues. Pacello could lose his law enforcement license, which is currently under review. Neither he nor his attorneys ever agreed to an interview for any of this reporting. However, a Goodyear deputy police chief did agree to speak with our I-team after he worked to bring it back online. After three months without a SWAT team, it's kind of been a whirlwind. Go. The Goodyear police unit is back up and running. It's been an interesting three months. Goodyear deputy chief David Farrow now oversees the SWAT team and all of the changes they're making after the previous SWAT commander was fired. It wasn't an easy decision. Hell Day is, is nothing that was ever condoned by the department. It was never a part of our official process. The term Hell Day was not sanctioned by the department, but in April, Goodyear's Chief of Police, Santiago Rodriguez, acknowledged the testing day was happening for years. Maybe 12 years or so. Rodriguez said the old way of testing was among the toughest in the country. Experts responded to the I-team's reporting, calling Goodyear's practices unheard of. They're so out of off, off kilter, they're out of bounds, they, they, they just don't get it. If that's the crux of our process and we have to rely on secrets, we probably shouldn't have a SWAT team. We should stand down and we should come into the, the 21st century. Uh, go. Which is what Goodyear did. Everything was on the table. How do we do our testing processes? How do we do our paperwork? According to an internal memo, after the SWAT team went non-operational on May 1st, the team's policies and standard operating procedure were rewritten. The new SWAT commander, Lieutenant James Hernandez, went through local and national SWAT training. Farrow says the team improved its record keeping and now keeps a roster of SWAT members. 
who are also now equipped with body cameras. And Farrow says the team's testing day has completely changed. Will there be any gas exposure in the new testing process? No. Will there be any handcuffs or hooding? No. Will there be any water training? No. Any ice water training? Nope. Inviting 12 News to observe the new physical fitness portion. There are things that we can do better. There are ways that we can evolve and we can strengthen ourselves, and we've done that. With the changes came changes in staff, with at least four SWAT team members leaving the team since the stand down, according to records obtained by 12 News. We have enough to cover any incident that is thrown before us. Pharaoh hopes pressing play on the SWAT team that was on pause for months gives the public more confidence in the police officers tasked with responding to the most urgent calls in the community. We are definitely a team that can come out and safely handle these events and keep the community and the public safe. After we went to the mock training, the Goodyear Police Department held a true testing day and added new members to the SWAT team. All of this reporting coming only after Jamie Cole first made her report to the chief of police in 2020. More than a year later, we caught up with her to see how she's doing now. I have chosen to take everything that I went through and use it as um, kind of a way to open other people's eyes to what the culture, what the policing culture is like. There are so many good police officers out there. There's so many good human beings. If you have an agency where the culture itself is corrupt, that corruption is going to carry out into the interactions with the people in the community because the oversight is just not there. I went on camera because I knew if I didn't, this would get swept under the rug like all of the other incidences. And I just didn't think that it was appropriate for the community to not know what was going on inside of that agency. Guys, our investigation started from an anonymous tip and ultimately it led to real change. For anyone looking to submit a tip to the iTeam, you can email us at iteam at 12news.com. We're in Goodyear, Bianca Bono, 12 News. Thanks, Bianca, and thank you for putting your trust in us. This has been a special report, Abuse of Force, which you can rewatch at 12news.com, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and on all of our social media channels.